Uh, good morning. Uh, the chairman of the APP group and Mrs. Tikanoskaya will make a statement and then we'll have a couple of questions. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, it's an honor for us that we can welcome today uh, Svetlana Tsikanovskaya in the EPP group. For us, she is the elected leader of Belarus, uh, and that's why it's really an honor to have her with us. We do not recognize uh, the dictator Lukashenko as the leader of uh, uh, Belarus, the closest friend of Vladimir Putin who defeated elections, democratic elections in his country. Um, the failed attacks against uh, Kiev started also close to Belarus, and now they are creating joint forces between Belarus and, and Russian uh, troops. Soon, hopefully not, they will also be part of any kind of activities on the ground and kill uh, Ukrainians. Um, I think we should really be very, very strong and clear uh, on possibilities to prepare new sanctions to Belarus and to Lukashenko, to the power system there, equally to what we do with Russia, because obviously they are one. And uh, I want to honor those who are fighting for our common ideas, uh, the courageous people of Belarus uh, who are doing this every day under a system of, uh, of uh, pressure from the state, uh, represented today from uh, Svetlana. And I want to admire again the people of uh, Ukraine. Uh, they are fighting the fight for all of us, and they must win the war. That's the only chance that we get finally a free Ukraine, that we get finally a free Belarus, and that we get finally, hopefully, also a free Russia in the free Europe. Thank you. Thank you, dear Manfred, uh, dear press, dear friends. Uh, I came here to European Parliament uh, to ask for more support for Belarus and Belarusian people. I came here to speak uh, on behalf of uh, the imprisoned Sakharov Prize winner, Maria Kolesnikova. I came here to speak on behalf of the jailed Nobel Prize winner, Alice Belyatsky, on behalf of everyone who is in jail and cannot be with us today. The situation in Belarus has become dramatic. Uh, Putin and Lukashenko raise stakes. They try to increase and legalize the constant uh, deployment of Russian troops on Belarus territory. And uh, we should call it by its name. It's an occupation. Our position is clear. Uh, Belarus must officially withdraw from participation in Russian war. Every Russian soldier must leave Belarus unconditionally. And uh, all involved in Russian attack from, uh, Belarus, and, uh, from Belarus must be held accountable. It's our fight to win, but we need your help as we face an enemy who denies the very existence of our country as a free and independent nation. I came here to ask Europe for more support, both for Belarus and for Ukraine, because our fates are intertwined. Uh, yes, we have different situations, of course. Uh, Ukraine uh, faces a terrible war, but our fight and enemy are the same. We need more Belarus in European Union and we need more Europe in Belarus. Belarusians chose the European and democratic path in 2020 and continue to fight for it fearlessly every day. So thank you, Manfred, again. Thanks to European People's Party for hosting me today. Thanks to European Parliament for supporting and recognizing democratic Belarus. And thank you for making me feel welcome here in the heart of Europe. And thank you for opening your hearts for Belarusians. Questions now? Look, I feel that Belarus is uh, a little overlooked uh, behind the situation in Ukraine, but we fully understand and support this because we realize how uh, uh, important all the possible assistance and support to Ukraine because uh, Ukraine actually now is uh, fighting for uh, all the freedoms uh, and uh, values of all, all um, European uh, countries and democratic countries, actually. But uh, also we understand that uh, Belarus uh, should be also on the agenda because um, I think that some 
politicians and people uh, don't realize the meaning of Belarus in this crisis, uh, that Belarus is part of the problem and this problem has to be solved in complex. Without free Belarus, uh, there will be constant threat to Ukraine, to our neighboring countries, and that's why uh, uh, no one Russian soldier should be left uh, in our country as well. Uh, I doubt that Belarusian soldiers would join uh, Russian army attacking Ukraine uh, because there are no readiness, no mood among uh, Belarusian army you know, to fight against Ukrainians. But um, what, is, what Lukashenko is doing now, he is uh, like threatening people, he's preparing people for uh, like possible attacks from Ukraine. So he is looking for external enemies. Uh, he said that Ukraine, Ukraine is going to attack us. Just uh, this word, he, he wants to justify uh, the presence of Russian troops on our territory. That look, we are preparing, we want to defend you, Belarusians. But Belarusian people understand that uh, there is no threat from Ukraine, there is no threat from Poland or Lithuania or any other democratic countries. And uh, they uh, understand that now Lukashenko fulfills uh, the will of like his master, Putin, and he uh, lost control over uh, at least uh, you know, uh, military situation in our country. One last one here. has yet to decide whether to take the European path. So today you know that uh, Belarus needs more Europe. Does it mean that uh, the democratic opposition or the society has already decided uh, about, the, about the orientation of Belarus? Uh, look, what is orientation? It means uh, we uh, cherish the same values as democratic world. We are not talking about European Union, you know, but we are talking about European values, uh, democratic values. And yes, uh, Belarusian people chose in 2020 this European way of development. It means uh, democracy, it means uh, uh, human rights uh, prevailing in our country. So, yeah. So, you, you chose the European Union? Or? We chose European values. And that is probably an extremely important reminder because we care a lot about Belarus. We ask what is happening now, now on the ground when it is about the cooperation on the military side with Russia. We care about what is happening in Ukraine. But the presence of Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya today is also a message to us uh, to believe in our values, to be strong. Let's face reality in the of the European uh, uh, societies. We are facing already a lot of populism uh, in a way that Let's avoid the high energy price, let's avoid the increase of uh, cost of living and so on. Why should we support so much? This presence of you is also a reminder for us. We have a common fight and, and this is what EPP wants to show now with Ursula as Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen as Commission President, Roberta Metzola as our President, that we want to lead and we want to be close on the side of those who fight for our values. That's why. Thank you so much for your Thank presence. You. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.